So the question we base this project around is: Is it ethically, is it ethical to have zoos? You know, to keep animals in cages and you know away from wildlife. And, yeah. Yeah. And we've come up with two arguments for this. It is right to keep animals in zoos for the conservation of that animal species. Because in the wild, the number of this animal, per se, could be very low. And you know, they could be on the verge of extinction. So to keep them in a zoo gives them the chance to rehabilitate their population to a level where they can go back in the wild. Right. But at the same time, keeping animals in zoos kind of keeps them away from the real world in a way. You know, they don't have to fight for their food, they don't have to defend themselves, you know, they're kind of, they're taken care of, which is not how, you know, animals live. They become dependent on humans for their, their needs of survival, rather than their own instincts like they would in the wild. But the bottom line with zoos is if they treat the animals with respect and care, they give them a proper place to live, like in their natural sort of habitat. For example, like if you have a penguin living in like a grassy field, that just doesn't make sense. That's wrong. It just comes down to the respect of the animals, and humans can't exploit these animals for either self-gain or self-profit. So I mean, basically it comes down to that. And humans just need true respect, and if they do that, then zoos are fine. But a lot of the times, zoos don't do that, and animals should not be allowed to be kept in there. They should be able to allowed to go back to their natural habitats in the wild. We think that zoos shouldn't exist, or we think they should actually not necessarily not exist, but make them uh, a larger living space for animals. And, yeah, better treatment for the animals, just overall. And at the San Francisco Zoo, uh, we're going to show you some examples of some living conditions that some of the animals are living in there. And you can tell us what you think about it. Alright, so we're at the zoo, we just got here. And uh, yeah, we're going to show how messed up it is. I don't know treated here. And yeah, that's the line to get in, so we'll be there in a minute, I guess. So the zoo says this zoo is about caring for African wildlife. These look pretty happy. Raider horns. over there. Yeah. All right, so they look pretty happy. Looks like a pretty good exhibit. I mean, the grass doesn't look exactly like a, you know, grass you'd see in Africa, but you know, they can eat it. Does well. You can see zebras eating at it over there. It's kind of a nice, uh, nice location. I'm sure they're kept up pretty well. It's gonna be one of the better uh, exhibits we're gonna see here. All right, so this exhibit is for lemurs. And the first thing you see is uh, seagulls and ducks. If you can tell, all the way up there in the trees is where the lemurs are. And I mean, that's a nice location. Eucalyptus trees aren't really native to Africa so much. And this water looks kind of uh, disgusting. It looks a little disgusting, I must say. But I mean, I guess if they're happy up in the tree, I mean, it's good for them. So uh, the animal we're looking at now is the mandrill. And uh, as you can see, the cage is kind of small, it looks really lonely, it's by itself, and I mean, does this look like it's normal terrain to you? Probably not. Um, yeah. That's it by itself down there. I don't really see any companions or anything. It's kind of sitting there in the dirt, uh, picking at its, look like maybe leg or something. Couldn't, I wouldn't call that the healthiest thing. But I mean, this exhibit really doesn't look like Africa. There's a monkey over there. And this is it's pretty big. Uh, Pretty big pen here. Then, if you look down where we are, there's this, uh, there's this wire. So this is the uh, penguin exhibit here. You can see the water. It's kind of a, a greenish yellow color, and it's pretty warm out today. It's probably 75 degrees, and penguins are used to living near Antarctica. And uh, I mean, they're not really doing much. And you can see there's a there's a seagull in their pen. He's over there having a sick time. But, uh, and it's they're kind of out of their element here. You can see this is where they're from, down here. So I mean, they're kind of out of their uh, natural habitat a little bit. See if you see there. There's a jaguar. Not exactly a place for animal, I would say. And then if you look around here, this is the uh, it's a lion house. This is where they feed them like uh, once or twice a day. They take them in from the pen out back, which we'll show you. I wonder if they had this before the tiger killed somebody. You know, they probably did, but it wasn't this obvious. Alright, so here we are at the tiger. So, you remember this story. This 
guys were drunk and they came in to see it. This wasn't here before, it was like this like, whole structure here. It's a big uh, thing. It's with throwing bottles and the tiger jumped up. Does this look like a happy place for a lion? This is the uh, rhino here. The other one over there is doing the same thing. Why? You can see this is obviously the most annoying bird ever created by God. Or, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, there's no God in Jesus Christ. Then you see all the way back there, you see some animal who really doesn't fit in. And he's sort of in the back staring at the fence. I don't really know what that's all about. It's not, I don't think it's supposed to be in this exhibit. So here we are at the lion. And it looks pretty dead to me, but I'm sure it's sleeping. All the animals are sleeping, <laughs> but it's the middle of the day. Doesn't really have to worry about hunting anything. He gets fed at a regular time every single day. So I guess this is his life. Uh, and the last one you saw the male lion. And this one, you can see that. It's a female lion, once again, just sleeping. And it seems to be all by itself. A wild peacock here. It's not in the cage as you can see. It's actually right in the middle of the path and see there's people walking right next to it. Probably the happiest animal here. I don't really expect it to either. Whoa. Stork here. And this is cage it has a uh, net roof on it so it's definitely not flying away. And it's uh, chilling out way in the back over there. Yeah, it's pretty lonely. Hey Jeff, it's like being back in Ghana. We've got the warthogs. Doesn't really look like Ghana too much. And uh, whoa, whoa, look, there's a peacock. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. I mean, we were just eating lunch and uh, we saw a peacock eating uh, chicken. So this is the grizzly bear here. So this is pen. We got this big structure, I guess. So we won't <laughs> won't jump out and kill us. But uh, if you can tell, it's missing a lot of fur. Yeah, I mean, it could be shedding or it could be some sort of infection something. The other one's back there just, I guess, sleeping, like, you know. This is the uh, polar bear in its definite natural habitat. So, I mean, the you know, polar bear looks by itself. I mean, does it look happy? Here's a, another polar bear exhibit here. And it's uh, grassy. Here we are in the uh, third consecutive polar bear pen. Dead. Sleeping all the way in the corner. The shade, probably trying to cool off because it is a pretty hot day out. Uh, sleeping in hay. Let's see who's up. Hello, kid here. And so there's these. the crappiest uh, animal in the actually has the biggest cage here. Kangaroo. On the hill. There's sleeping. so many of them. And there's. Is that a peacock? So help me God. Notice how. Before all of like, you know, the one animal sleeping and one with someone awake or something, notice how there's two awake and then they're all sleeping. So, as you can see, or as you can guess, it's a bird pen for the golden eagle. Native to around here, but this one, I guess not so lucky. Nope. <laughs> He's stuck in here by himself. We're on the farm, small farm. Goats everywhere. All they want is food and they don't really care how they get it. That's all I have to say. And that's their main purpose in life over here. And if you're willing to give that machine over there a few quarters, you're gonna make a goat's day. Yeah, I've seen these guys in the actual wild. Definitely know they like to jump from tree to tree. They're really not going to do that in here so much. Cute. They're going to jump up there, and then jump down there, and then jump up there. That's basically the extent of where they're going to go. Alright, so we just left the zoo, and we're on our way home. And uh, one of the things I noticed is we would go up to an exhibit, and a lot of people would go, Oh, poor animal, poor animal. And it was, I mean, after a while it kind of got old, because all these people were sort of just complaining about how the animals were kept. They weren't really doing anything. They weren't really doing anything, they were just sleeping. Some of them looked sad, some of them looked tired. I mean, I really didn't see an animal that was, you know, excited to be living at the zoo. And I think the people there really noticed that. And I don't really know how it stays open if people have opinions like that and they keep animals in the conditions that they are. Yeah, clearly they're not really doing anything.